Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Nobody but you, God. We set our heart on you because you're God Almighty. God, we glorify you in this place. We magnify your great name. You are God and God alone. Who is like the Lord Almighty? Nobody. You are our Savior. You're our soon coming King God. Oh God, we thank you today. Lift up the hung down head. Who is this King of glory? You're the Lord God strong and mighty. You're the Lord God mighty in battle, God. This hung down heads, God. We thank you, God, that they are lifted up in you in the name of Jesus as we set our hearts on you, Father. We take control of this atmosphere with Holy Ghost power and we command that the atmosphere bow down to the name of Jesus and everything in here that's not like you, we command it to desist this maneuver right now in the name of Jesus that our hearts will receive God let the word today fall on good ground take root God and bring forth fruit fruit that will remain God fruit that will give you glory God fruit that will show the enemy we belong to you and that you take care of everything that belongs to us in the name of Jesus there's nobody like you God we pour out our praise on you we worship you God we look to the hills from Whence cometh our help? Our help comes from you. We don't have any other help other than you. Everything that we are is because of you, God. And tonight, God, we want to see you move. We didn't come to see a man, God. We came to see Holy Spirit. We came to see you move, God. Move, God, like only you can in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll magnify your name. We'll lift you up because you're God and you deserve it all, God. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nobody like him. I didn't find anybody like the Lord God that I serve. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God this is a Monday night Bible study but I thank God for saving me I thank God that he called me by name I thank God for who he is and that I can depend on him hallelujah glory to God I know we got work to do here thank you Jesus but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me who would I be if I didn't say thank you God for saving me keeping me, blessing me, nobody but you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah, ladies. Amen. I thank God for being here. I thank God for this opportunity. I always thank God anytime he allows me to say anything for him because he's so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the beautiful staff. Thank God for the beautiful speakers. Thank God for you, the beautiful table leaders, and everybody that's here tonight. That beautiful conference, my God, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you didn't enjoy it, I did. Thank you, Lord. And I'm telling you, Hosanna, I just love the Lord when I get caught up in worship. Uh, these are tears of joy. Hallelujah. But Hosanna Wong let the Lord use her. Didn't she? The, the theme of the conference was he is. He is. She said he is a forgiven God. She talked about getting rid of shame. Powerful message. A poor spoken word. And our own speakers, what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Giving honor to whom honor is due. They let the Lord use them. Joyce said that he is trustworthy. In the midst of the storm, after the storm, in the storm, above the storm, under the storm, anytime you need him, God is trustworthy. Oh, yes, he is. And then Renee came back with a power pack punch, and she said, he, when he is silent, you don't need to be. You need to be saying something. You need to get in his presence and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. He didn't have to do it. I know we're teaching tonight, but I feel God. If you weren't here, I saw the new hands. Full disclosure, I love the Lord and I'm old school. I'm old school. I am. I know that. I'll admit it. I was raised with the mother's boy back in the day when they used to tell you, call Jesus. You want to get saved? All this other stuff? Uh-uh. Call his name. You come to the altar and say, Jesus, that's all you had to do. And they knew when you got saved because when you say Jesus, 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 Je you're coming in there. First of all, you halfway, 
even want to be there. And you're like, Jesus, Jesus. And then you call it Jesus. But when you really call on Jesus and he shows up, they looking at you at the altar and they say, oh, that, then she got it. Because they see it. They see the change when Jesus shows up. When the spirit of the Lord shows up, he makes a difference. So we're talking about a new Bible study tonight. Amen. Let's get in the word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So tonight, we, we're talking about the parables of Jesus. And so, tonight we're jumping in. The parable is just a story that tell, uh, teaches a lesson. Jesus did it often. He's a master teacher. Tonight, we're talking about the good shepherd. The good shepherd. That's a Bible study in and of itself. Heavy. And I said, God, what? I, Bring it down. Let's, we're going to talk about a few points tonight. Just enough to get you to go and do the Bible study homework throughout the week. But the good shit, boy, this is a loaded word. Amen. But before we jump into John chapter 10, you can turn your Bibles there. The Bible is 66 books, Old Testament, New Testament, written by men, inspired by Holy Spirit. But man put chapters in there and verses so we can understand makes sense it's great sometimes you have to go back a chapter to really get what jesus is saying because jesus is so awesome he'll jump up on the scene and deliver and cut down and bind up and he walks away you're like wait a minute what happened jesus wait, he's in and out so in this particular parable talking about the good shepherd john chapter 10 for your for you you bible scholars out there uh, John chapter 10. We're going to go back to verse chapter 9. And I'm just going to tell you that for the sake of time because we do want to get all the way through. Now, in John chapter 9, the Bible is talking about a blind man. Jesus shows up on the scene, and then you can read it later. If you want to follow along, please do. But he, he comes, the Bible says, and he passes by a blind man. And the disciples say, Who sinned? You know how we do. We want to know, you know, they, ooh, they lost their house. What they, their husband didn't balance the checkbook. What happened? You know how we do. Who's seeing that this man is, was born blind? And Jesus said, no, nobody's seeing this and that. He tells them. And then Jesus reaches down, makes an ointment, puts it on his eyes, tell the man, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is the pool of scent. Sends him out. By faith, he goes. His sight is restored. Great. The Pharisees find out about it. Pharisees were the leaders of the day back in Jesus' time. They were spiritual leaders. They should have known scripture, the Bible. This, the man is blind. Back in that day, blind people usually sat outside of the temple. That was their job. They were begged. That's how they got money. So he's, the Pharisees see this. They call him in. What happened to you? Who did this? The man was like, well, uh, hmm. Uh, I, uh, he's a prophet. Uh, they said, who was it? This man has to be a sinner because he, what, he shouldn't have done this on the Sabbath day. And the man was like, well, I don't know who he was. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. You ever been in that situation where you, you, you don't even know, you, you didn't really even know Jesus. You had kind of heard of Jesus, but you got a miracle. And you're like, well, I, I think I know that's how he was. He was like, you know how they, they, they the, the DC comics, Superman, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, no, uh, it's Superman. They know somebody got healed from a burning car, burning truck, they know, but they know it's, it's got to be Superman. He didn't know. He didn't know. So they, the Pharisees, the, who should have been the spiritual leaders, put him out of the church, basically fired him from his job. He couldn't, if he can't come to the synagogue, he can't ask for money, he, he's gone. Jesus... Almighty Jesus heard about it, and he said, I got to go back and see about the blind man. Jesus goes back. Now, think about this. Put yourself in this scene. We are, we are in a Bible study talking about the parables of Jesus. Think about where we are. This man has just received sight and has never been able to see. That alone would have been a miracle. Period, end of discussion. It's a great miracle, don't you think? If you've been praying about something all your life and you get it, wouldn't you be happy? But Jesus, caring about the one sheep so much, he came back with his disciples and he said, 
to the blind man, you don't know who I am. He wanted to correct a situation that was ultimately going to be the very thing that man needed. Being able to see was great, but knowing Jesus is the greatest thing of all. And Jesus came back to correct that one thing for that sheep. So he said, I am the son of God. I am who the Bible speaks about. This whole Bible points to Jesus. I like the way Second Solomon, Song of Solomon says it. I am the rose of Sharon. I am the lily of the valley. I'm a bright, fragrant rose when you're going through your deepest, darkest place. That's who I am. And that man said, I believe, I receive. And he worshiped Jesus. And that's where we get into the parable with the good shepherd. It's in that setting where you have Pharisees who should have been preaching Jesus looking at the Messiah saying, thank God he came in my day, looking on all of this. You got the disciples who don't even know what's going on. Yeah, what, what's going on with that man, Jesus? Disciples who are walking with Jesus and don't even know what's going on. And then you got the blind man who just received Jesus. What a situation to be in. Get the visual. Now, Jesus says in the midst of that situation, he said, I am the good shepherd. Let me tell you what's going on here. So if you pick up in your Bible, glory to God. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 13. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, somebody who we just hired for the day, uh, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Now let's look at this through the eyes of the blind man. We're talking about the good shepherd. He just received his sight. And now Jesus is declaring in the midst of all that, I'm the good shepherd. Well, why, is, why would Jesus choose a sheep to refer to himself? In that day, shepherds were very important. Sheep, very important. Sheep were a means of payment. You could pay for things. They, they, were, they were valuable. They had wool. You could cut it off. You could make clothes. Sheep were food. You could sacrifice. And very important. But sheep were, had bad eyesight. They couldn't really see. And they also needed to be led because they go anywhere. They're not the smartest animals in the world. Thank you, Jesus, for referring to us as sheep. But sometimes we think we know it all. Oh, you know you do. You get in your own situations and you try to I speak for me. Everybody looking at me like, not me, Corliss. I, I love the Lord. I don't do that. Well, I'll speak for me. Sometimes I get in situations. I'm like, I got that, Jesus. I know what to do here. And that doesn't work out really well. So here he's referring to him as a sheep because the sheep needed to be guided by a good shepherd. Not a shepherd, not one shepherd, the good shepherd. So that's why he's referring to him. The shepherd cared for the sheep, protected the sheep, would give his life for the sheep. He owned the sheep. He didn't own the sheep, but he was there like he did. He talked to the sheep. He named the sheep. He knew the sheep. He put oil on their head so they wouldn't get an infection. He was intimate with the sheep. He was. So much so that the sheep knew his voice. They weren't the smartest animal, but what they did know is who was feeding them, who was protecting them. When somebody came and they didn't get killed, they knew that they had somebody that cared about them. And then the shepherd gave them a name and he would call them, talk to them. He smelled like them. They knew his voice. Let's look at an example of what that might have looked like knowing the shepherd's voice. One more time.
Cool. Amazing. know their shepherd and that's how we are supposed to be I hear I used to work with young people at my former church love young people and they used to say Miss Corliss I don't know if I'm hearing my thoughts or I don't know how to discern a voice so let me tell you something get in his word you'll hear his voice there is something innate in us that the good shepherd put in us he knew we would need to get back to him and he put it on the inside of us he left no stone turn we can hear his voice and we can hear it clearly and just like those sheep will come looking Jesus yes what do you need from me I surrender all we have work to do see that's what I found though that's what I told the young people I'm not telling you I'm saying I told my young people not you you need to put in some work nobody's just gonna give you this you got to work for this you had yay salvation is free but in order to know God in a deeper level Oh, yeah, you got to go in. Jesus did it. The Bible said that he prayed in the, from the night to morning, all night long. Well, anyway, I digress. Let me get back on my, uh, thank God for notes, because uh, I would, <laughs> hallelujah. So out of that, <laughs> there are three points that we want to talk about from that, the good shepherd. I said, God, okay, you're the good shepherd, and that, we could stop right there. But in this parable, he talks about something else. He comes up on, I am the door. Oh, yeah, that's all right now. Thank you, Jesus. He says in John chapter 10, verses 7 through 9, he says, so Jesus said again, again, he's a great teacher. He's reiterating the point. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I am the door for the sheep leading to life. All who come before me are false messiahs and self-appointed leaders. They are thieves and robbers, but the true sheep do not hear them. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever and will go in and out freely and find green pastures. Boy, this thing is so heavy, we could stop right there, but we're not. We're going to finish this. Listen, you remember that game show, Let's Make a Deal? Door one, door two, door three, and you have to, well, which one I want to choose? You got the audience, two, two, choose two, two, and you're like, oh, but two doesn't, look, I don't want to guess. I don't, because more likely than not, if I choose the wrong one, I'm going to set it off, and now I'm competitive. I want to win. Pray for me. I'm just that competitive. You need, I'm serious. So if I choose door number two, and it's got some grass in it, I'm going to be upset in there. So I want to know which one. Jesus took all the guesswork away. He said, I am the door. What's a door? It's an access point. It gives you an, an entrance into the kingdom of God. He said, I'm the way. Anybody coming up any other way? is not right. I'm it. I'm the one. I will give you access to healing, forgiveness, single woman, the right man, married woman, healing a relationship, health, deliverance, whatever you need. I'm the door. You know when it's cold outside, you run into a building trying to get outside of the wind? When you get in, you find comfort. That's what you get when you walk through the door with Jesus. You get deliverance inside the kingdom. You get healing inside the kingdom. Oh, yes, you do. It's the door going on. Second point, the door, we got the good shepherd, we got the door, we got a deceiver. Jesus is so concerned about his sheep. Now, remember, we're looking at this through the eyes of the blind man. And he's saying, what all did I just get by being saved? Jesus was concerned about the one sheep. He went back to get the blind man to help him not be bitter because they put him out of the, the synagogue. And he's teaching, I'm the good shepherd, I'm the door. But you know what? There's a deceiver coming. He says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill and destroy. But I am come that they might have life 
and have it more abundantly. That's a good God we serve. Amen. He gave us the answer to the test before it came. He said, it's going to come. Oh, trials of life will come. And people are facing some situations. But I declare, when you put Jesus on it, the good shepherd walk in the door and gain access, gain protection, you will get a miracle. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he'd have to repent. If Jesus said it, he'll do it. And if he spoke it, shall he not make it good? The Bible says that not one piece, not one jot, not one word will come back to him void. He made heaven and earth disappear before anything that he said in his word goes away. So what does that mean? You have the privilege of putting the word on the enemy, putting Jesus on your trials, telling your trials to get beneath me, to tell God to prepare a table before me in their very presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a good God. This thing is real. This is not just a, a formality, coming to Bible study, reading the word, serving God. This is power. Hallelujah. It's power. Glory to God. So, we're talking about, amen, the good shepherd, the door, the deceiver. I remember when I was in school, I had this teacher, I was in advanced biology. I, I hated, I shouldn't use that, I didn't like science at all. I was a numbers person, I didn't like science. And in the advanced, I was like, who enrolled me in this? But there's a, we, this teacher would tell us, every day when we left our class, she'd say, you guys have a good evening. Okay, okay, we good. But if she said, you guys have a good evening studying, we knew the next day it was going to be a pop quiz. She went to, now you know that take, but thank God for her. She said, you have a good evening study. Oh, I know, I, I went home, I got that book, I got my notes, I started preparing. Because I knew it was a quiz coming tomorrow. Jesus already told us the thief comes. He didn't say he might. He said he comes. He comes. This is what he's going to do. He's going to try to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, but I've given you the answers to the pop quiz. The test of life. I have already come. I'm a good shepherd. I'm the door that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Whatever he comes with. Oh, I've already taken care of it. Don't worry about it. It's already done. You got more power. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Third point. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I do love the Lord. Please be. I asked y'all last time, could I please be myself? Lord, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. It's been, you know, I've seen God do too much. I've been through too much. If I told you my real testimony, you'd be like, girl, how you standing? The good shepherd. Amen. Third point. So we got the good shepherd. We got a door that we can go in. We got the deceiver that we know is coming, but we know we got power all over him. We know our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of any stronghold. Hallelujah. Let me uh, go on looking at the time. Praise you, Jesus. Um, the good shepherd, the deceiver, we know. Okay, so but then he said, deliverance. And this right here is where we can hang everything that we go through on this. In John chapter 10, starting at verse 14, it says, talking about deliverance, looking at this thing through the eyes of the blind man. It says, I am the good shepherd. He's reiterating his point. And I know my sheep and have known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there, there they will, no other voice will they follow. Hallelujah. I am, there is one flock and one shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up. This command have I received of my father. Now, back in that day, if they had a microphone with all those people, Jesus could have just, boop, 
dropped it. Why? Because he said right here, I'm the deliverance. I, I'm the deliverer. I am. It. You, you got to look at the scene here. He got his haters over here. He got his helpers over here and his disciples. And he got his healed right here. He got an audience. Baby, he got an audience. And you know, you can feel when certain people want to do something. He, but he didn't care because he knew what he had to do. He was there for that one sheep. He came for me. He came for cordless. Hey, all you, amen for all you, but I know he came for me. And he said it. He said, I lay down my life. No man take that from me. What kind of power is that? That's a good God. He said, I freely, willingly, of my own volition, lay my life down. And guess what? I'm so powerful because I'm not only the son of man, I'm the son of God. I got the power to raise it up again. I don't know anybody with that kind of power. I, I got some friends that went on to be with the Lord and they didn't raise themselves up, but Jesus is alive at the tomb over in Israel. It's a beautiful sight. When y'all looked at it, checked on the inside, I didn't see anybody. I didn't see anybody there. Jesus is alive and he said, I did this thing willingly. I'm a good shepherd. That's what kind of shepherd we're talking about here. To willingly die for the sheep. I'll protect them even if it costs my life. That's a deliverance. I'll do what I have to do because I love you. You got a problem tonight? Jesus loved you enough to die for it. To shed his blood so that you can call Jesus, 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 Jesus until he shows up. What kind of God would he be? What kind of good shepherd would he be if you keep calling on his name and he doesn't answer? He said, I'm a God that hears and I answer prayer. Oh, yes. This is real. This is not a game. This is real. Amen. He laid his life down for the sheep. That's us. That's that blind man looking and seeing and saying, okay, he did that for me. I thank God. He's a good shepherd. Wrapped up in that is everything we need. All the way to the cross and back to glory. So the point I want to leave you with, because Jesus came to the earth willingly to be the son of man, left all that glory and splendor, because he came as the good shepherd, and he laid down his life and went back to heaven, we received salvation. And arguably, that's one of the greatest gifts. Holy Spirit, absolutely. A lot of great gifts, but salvation is one. And because you belong to the kingdom of God, you have access through the door. You know what's going to happen with the deceiver, but you got power over him because Jesus is our deliverer. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to our hearts and giving us direction, God. Speaking to us so that we will hear your voice and a stranger we will not follow. God, we just thank you tonight for your word penetrating as the discussions go forth at the tables, God. I thank you now that you will speak to the hearts and the minds and the spirits of everyone there, that no one will leave this place without an answer, without a breakthrough, without insight, without a friend, without deliverance, God, in the name of Jesus, because you're so concerned about the one sheep. You're such a good shepherd. We thank you now for manifesting yourself and doing the work like only you can. We'll be ever so careful to always give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah.